Welcome to the Plant Breeding and Genomics Community of Practice webinar, How to Align Sequences. My name is Heather Merck, and I'm the Content Coordinator for PBG and your host today. So please help me welcome today's presenter, Dr. Candace Hansey. Dr. Hansey received her Bachelor of Science and PhD degrees from the University of Wisconsin-Madison in genetics and plant breeding and plant genetics programs, respectively. Dr. Hansey is currently a postdoctoral researcher at Michigan State University, where she, com where she is combining her background in plant breeding and bioinformatics to understand the genetic diversity in both maize and potato and how that diversity can be utilized to improve commercial production. Thanks, Heather. So the seminar today is going to be broken down into four parts. First, we're going to look at how to navigate through NCBI to obtain sequences for our alignment. The next thing we'll do is um, actually go through the theory and how to use BLAST in a web interface. Um, we'll then go through a few specialized sequence alignment scenarios and um, programs for those. And then we'll finish up with talking about next generation sequence technologies and the programs that are available for aligning those sequences. All right, so let's get started with navigating in CBI. Um, So our goal, um, say we have our favorite gene, and that gene is Tiacinte branched 1. And we want to find all other organisms with orthologs to that gene in them. The first thing we need to do is find the sequence for our favorite gene. And that's where we're going to start with in NCBI. All right, to get to this website, you can either Google NCBI, and it's going to be your top hit, or you can type in the URL that you can see right here. Um, and I encourage you all to go along with this exercise with me. I'm going to have screenshots on here, but I encourage you to do it live on your own computers. So we have a few things that we can do from this home page. First, you can see we have a link to the BLAST uh, web interface that we'll be using later here. Um, there's links to PubMed on this home page that um, are, are going to be of interest for people outside of this webinar, but here, you know, it's just where it's at. And then um, for, for searching for our sequence, this is the area of this home page that we're going to use. So NCBI has a lot of different databases, and we can either do a search with all of the databases or we can uh, select a specific one. We're going to select this gene database. And we're going to type in, see, is it advancing? There we go. We're going to type in ZMAs, an organism. So by placing this organism here, we can specify that we want to only find um, sequences from the gene database that are from ZMAs. But you can see when we do this, we get you know, thousands of sequences. And we can't search through all of those to find the one that we are interested in, the TB1 gene. So, we're going to specify a little bit further. And what we did here is we put this AND operator. And you can use an AND or an OR to make your search more specific. And you always want to have those in capital letters. So then when we do ZMAs as our organism and Tisente branched 1, then you can see all of our three alignments now are maize genes, and they're all annotated as Tisente branched 1. So we're going to click on this second link down, the second result. All right, so if we look at this page, for those of you who are doing this at home, you'll see, or on your computers, you'll see that this is about halfway down the screen. But what you can get out of this, there's a lot of information on here that has the, um, the NCBI reference sequence section. You can click on this source here. And that's going to take us to the GenBank results page. OK, so in this GenBank results page, we have a lot of different things that we can see. We have the locus name here. Um, we have various information about um, the organism it came from, um, who submitted this sequence. If you look further down, we have um, the actual sequence down here. You click on this CDS link, 
um, it will highlight down in the sequence where the coding sequence part of this is. We have the protein sequence, but most programs that we're going to use for sequence alignment, including BLAST, can't take this GenBank format, so we need to actually see it in FASTA sequence. So we have this link up here where we can click and get the FASTA sequence, or you can do this display settings and it will allow you to do additional formats other than FASTA. So for now we're going to just click on the FASTA link there. And you can see now we have this sequence in FASTA format. And um, for those of you who don't know, FASTA format is going to start with this greater than symbol. And then we have a descriptor here. And the next line will start the sequence. And that sequence will continue until the next greater than symbol if there was more than one um, sequence in a file. So this is a very standard format for um, bioinformatics type work, and this is what we're going to need for our BLAST alignment. Okay, so now that we have our, blast, our sequence, let's go through how to actually BLAST that to a database. All right, so first of all, what is BLAST? BLAST stands for Basic Local Alignment Search Tool. It's used for searching a query sequence, such as our TB1 sequence, against a database or one other sequence. Um, it uses a local alignment, which searches for regions in the query that locally align to the subject sequence. Um, and the way that BLAST works is it uses a word-based heuristic so that it takes um, a portion of the sequence as the seed and then extends out from there using a local alignment method. And finally, there's two different versions of BLAST that are commonly used, NCBI BLAST, which is what we're going to go through today. We're going to look at the um, web version of NCBI BLAST. And there's also Woo BLAST that was um, created at Michigan or at a Washington University by the original developer of BLAST. Okay, so I said that BLAST uses a local alignment, but what does this actually mean? So in a global alignment, it's going to attempt to align everything across the entire distance. And so you get a lot of these gapping regions. Um, global alignments are quite nice for things that are very similar in um, content and length. Um, but a lot of times we have, you know, we're doing a small sequence to a whole chromosome or something else, and so we want to do a local alignment where it's going to find the most biologically relevant alignment, and this is what BLAST uses. So how exactly does BLAST do what it's doing? It first takes a small word, and it looks for that, that string of letters in the, the database that we're blasting against. So these, these words are the seeds for the local alignment. Once it finds that, that word, it's going to extend out from there in the local alignment. So we do our extension, and we're looking for continuous matches in both directions up from the seed. And if we have mismatches, we're going to have penalty, penalties for that at this point. So it's going to keep continuing out until it can't any longer, and then it's going to do uh, a local alignment where it, it's a modification of the Smith-Waterman algorithm, it's, um, and this is where we put gaps in, so this is the gapped part of the alignment process. And then finally it's going to use a scoring method to decide if these sequences are similar enough to be reported back to the user based on a probability um, that it's random or not. All right, so within BLAST, there's many different flavors of BLAST that we can use. BLAST N is going to allow us to take a DNA sequence and align it to another DNA sequence. BLAST P will allow us to take protein as our query and protein as our subject. Blast X, our subject or our, our query will be DNA, but it's going to do a six-frame translation of it, and then it's going to go against a database that's protein sequences. T blast N is a query that's protein, and then the 
the database is going to be DNA, but we're going to do a six-frame translation on that. And then finally, we can do TBLASTX for both the query and the subject are DNA, but we'll do six-frame translation on both of those and see if we get any alignments within any of the frames. So because you're doing six-frame translation on both the, the query and the subject, this is going to be your slowest um, flavor of blast that you can use. So which program should you use? That's a big question. Um, and it depends on what database you have, what query you have, and, and how much sensitivity you need. So obviously you're going to be limited by the nature of your subject and query as to if it's DNA or protein. Um, but then beyond that, BLASTN and BLASTP are both good for identifying sequences that are already in databases or finding local regions of similarity in closely related organisms. BLASTX is what you're going to want to use when you have nucleotide sequences, an unknown reading frame, or sequence errors that could lead to a shift in the, in the um, coding sequence. And the reason that you want to use BLASTX here is because it's going to allow you to have the six-frame translation. So if you have an error that's going to shift your coding, um, shift your frame, it will find part of it and then in another frame the other part of it. Um, and then TBLAST10 is going to be useful for finding homologs um, in sequences where the frame is unknown or sequencing errors are likely to be present, such as ESGs or draft sequences. Now this is not the end all for which flavor of BLAST is going to be the one you want to use, but this should help people to get started with their own research in, the, in deciding which flavor is the best one for them. Oh, and sorry, I forgot. TBLASTX is uh, used to detect novel ORBs or exons, and like I said before, this is very slow. Okay, so now that we've gone through what exactly BLAST is and the flavors of BLAST, I want to take some time here to do an exercise. And again, I encourage you to do this part along with me at home. So we're going to take our TV1 sequence that we found previously in this webinar, and we're going to blast it. And we're going to try and find all of the orthologs, or all the, the um, species that have orthologs to TV1. So you can get to this page by Googling NCBI Blast, and again, it's going to be the top hit, or you can go to the NCBI homepage and click on the Blast link that I pointed out earlier. So on this page, you can see we can select um, reference genotypes here at the top that, um, that are available through NCBI, or um, we can skip this and just select a flavor of BLAST. So we're going to come down to this part, because we don't want to look against just a single species, and we're going to click the NCBI BLAST, or the nucleotide BLAST. And it's going to take us to this page without all this information filled in. All right, so up here at the top is where we're going to want to enter our query sequence. So we're going to um, copy and paste our FASTA sequence that we um, found earlier here. You can also alternatively upload a sequence. We're going to select the database that we'd like to search this against. Here we have human and mouse, but um, we, we want to select the entire non-redundant nucleotide collection. So we are making sure we are all inclusive in this search that we're doing. We're going to make sure we have the BLAST N selected. And then we'll, we'll click the BLAST button that's at the bottom of the page. And I apologize if you're trying to follow along at home. This might take a few minutes for your BLAST to be completed, but we'll, we'll move forward and while yours is running. So one other thing that I want to point out is another option that you can use that we're not going to use today, but um, here in the organism section, you can uh, specify your search by typing in um, a specific organism, and it'll limit the, the database to only, re, um, only sequences that are from that species. So you can start typing in the name, and it will find everything that there is for that. You can use the scientific or the common name. Um, and then you'll just, you know, if you wanted to go against the rice sequences, you click on Rhizus Taiva, and you would only go against those. 
So here's a result from BLAST if we don't limit um, to a specific organism for our database. And this is what the output will look like. This is the top. You can see you'll have your query ID the, uh, and a description of it and a bit of information about the length and also the database that you use. Here you also have a graphical display of all of your hits that are going to be sorted by the score. And the score is a function of how well your sequence aligned to a sequence in the database. If we scroll down a little bit further, we get this um, table format here. And what we have is, is the score or the alignment, the, the coverage, and identity, as well as this E value, which is a measure of, of the significance of the hit. So the smaller this value, the better the hit. So you can see here, our top hit is to itself, which is good. That's what we would expect. Um, and it's 100% coverage, 100% identity. Um, and if we keep looking down, we have mostly grass. Here we have sorghum, rice, switchgrass, pearl millet, everything that, that we would hypothesize to see this aligning to. So if we want to see this specific alignment now, we can either click on this max score, and it'll take us down, or when we were on the previous page, um, each of these is a link to an alignment as well. So by either of those methods, we will get down, or you can scroll down to these alignments, and you can actually see a specific alignment. So here we have an alignment. Um, I selected the one to sorghum. And you can see where the mismatches and insertions and deletions are in the alignment. And it also gives you um, details about the identity, so how many of the aligned nucleotides were the same here. Okay, so that's a basic how-to on using the web-based BLAST interface. For more information on BLAST, you can go to this URL. So the web-based BLAST interface is really designed for low-throughput searching. If you have a lot of sequences or you want a very specific personalized database, you may want to consider um, getting the command line format of BLAST, which is downloadable. Um, not only does this allow you to create custom databases, it also allows you to search many sequences simultaneously rather than putting one in at a time on the web interface. Uh, so for people who want to use this command line, I highly recommend getting a program such as Ubuntu, um, which is a Linux virtual machine that you can put onto your computer um, in programs such as VirtualBox. And um, I definitely recommend this for PC users, as many of the programs that we're going to discuss in the next part of this webinar um, are Linux, Unix based. But also for Mac users out there, there's um, within Ubuntu, there's modules that make it quite easy to download a lot of these programs that you may want to use. Okay, so BLAST is a very general purpose program, um, but sometimes we have very specialized sequence alignment needs, and um, there's, more, there's programs that are better suited for those needs. So the first um, situation that we're going to talk about is aligning EST and cDNA sequences. So the reason that we may want to use a more specialized program for this is that with with these sequences, we're going to have large gaps due to the introns that um, may score very lowly um, or come as two hits, and, and we don't want that. We want to see the, the whole alignment for our EST. So Exonerate is um, a generic tool for pairwise sequence comparison. Um, this comes grid-ready with the ability to chunk files directly through Exonerate. Um, and if I haven't mentioned this, I should say this next section is going to be all command line based. And um, so I apologize for those who are familiar with how to use the command line, but I highly suggest um, learning it if you want to do more uh, sequence alignments on a larger scale like this. Okay. So Exonerate can be run in many different models 
for GAPT and UNGAPT alignments. Today we're going to talk about two specifically, the EST to genome and uh, the cDNA to genome, although this is um, definitely not all the modules that can, or models that can be used with in Exonerate, they're the two that we'll talk about today. Um, so if you would like to see additional models that are um, available through Exonerate, you can either go to the MAN page that's online at this URL here, or um, from the command line you can use the dash H option to see all of the possible models. All right, so an example of how you'd run Exonerate from the command line, you first type the program name, and you're going to want to use this query here and whatever your um, multifaceted sequence file name is, we go here, we want to specify that our query type is DNA. Then we're going to uh, give it information about our target sequence and this can again be multiple sequences. So we have a multifaceted file with all of our genome sequence. And then um, we want to tell it again what type of uh, molecules there are in here, so these are DNA. We're going to specify that we wanted to search um, using the EST to genome model, which is um, specific for searching ESTs and um, the parameters are specific to that. Um, we don't want it to show us alignments. If you, want it, if you want to see the specific alignments, you can put yes here, but if we're searching a lot, maybe we just want to get a table. Um, show vulgar is another type of alignment, so we're going to say no to that also. Um, GFF is a common file format in informatics, but um, we're going to say no to that, and then we can say use this RIO, and we can specify which um, columns we want in the output in a tab delimited format. Um, so there's many more columns that can be specified than just this, but what this tells us is I would like you to print the query ID and then a tab, and then print the target ID and a tab, print the query start position, the query stop position, the target start, and the target stop for each of the alignments. And we also need to tell this program what is our estimated minimum and maximum intron size so that it knows what's in a reasonable alignment. And then we give it um, a path to where we want to export it. So like I said, this is going to come out as a tab delimited file. But one thing that you should note is that this output is going to come in inner base coordinates. If you use the GFF format, which we turned off, it won't be an interface, but all of their outputs from Exonerate will. And what this means is instead of this being 1, 2, 3, 4 for the ACGT, this alignment is actually from, from position 0 to position 4 rather than 1 to 4. This is what the interface coordinates are. So this is something you should know within Exonerate. Um, it's different in that output. So if you would like to see a complete list of the options, again, that's available on the MAN page or um, by using the dash H option that I mentioned before. All right, so another specific scenario that we might want to do within sequence alignment is aligning a whole genome to another whole genome. For this, we have three different possible programs we can use within Mummer, which is what we'll use for this. We have Mummer itself, which is designed for rapid alignment of entire genomes. We have NUCMER, which is designed for the alignment of contigs to another set of contigs for a whole genome. And then we have PROMER that's going to align on a protein level um, in six frame translation. And this is ideal for aligning two, uh, whole genomes of two species that are too diverge for a DNA alignment. Um, this is available for download at um, this URL, and it's there's also uh, manual and examples there. So I'll walk us through using uh, Mummer and you can go to the, um, the Mummer page to see examples for the other two. Okay, so Mummer can handle multiple reference and query se sequences. Um, in this example, we're going to give it one sequence so that we can 
look at the mummer plots afterwards. So this is the basic command line that you would use. You put mummer, whatever options you want to give it, your reference sequence, and the query sequence. Um, and then to generate the plot, again, you'll do mummer plot, your options, and then this match file is going to be the output from this previous um, mummer command. So if we look at an example of this now, you can see we'll start with mummer. We're going to say give me this dash mum, which um, tells the program to find the maximal unique matches. We'll give it this dash B option, um, which will tell it to compute both forward and reverse complement matches. Um, we'll give it this dash C option, and that says, um, although you're checking in the forward and reverse, only output them um, relative to the forward strand. And then we're going to give it um, our FASTA sequence for genotype 1 and our FASTA sequence for genotype 2. And then we'll say, um, with this greater than sign, that means output to this file that we specified, this output.mums. We're then going to want to do the, the mummer plot so that we can see this on a graphical level. We can specify um, the x and y axis to say, um, only give me from base 0 to uh, whatever we specify here. Um, and then we want to tell it to give it to us in ping format, and this output.mums is the input for this, which is the file we generated up here with Mummer. Um, there's more additional options for both of these programs that you can find using the dash H option or going to the website. So now let's look at what this Mummer, Mummer and Mummer plot is going to give us. And this is what this is what the plot looks like. So for all of the forward mums, they're going to be red, and the reverse mums are going to be green. Any dot that's on a line with a slope of 1, those are going to be um, unchanged, and ones with a negative 1 are inversions, like here. Um, and this allows you to see where you have syntony across the chromosome between two different genomes. So the last thing that I want to talk very briefly about within these specialized alignments is alignment of short sequences, such as um, microarray probes, primers, um, if you have short context sequence for SNPs. Um, a very nice program to do the alignment for that is vMatch. vMatch requires a license, and so I don't want to talk too much about it today because this is not a freely available program, but uh, if these are tasks that you foresee yourself doing, I would look into using vMatch for them. All right, so the last thing that we're going to talk about today is um, next generation sequence alignment programs. Okay, so there's a lot of different technologies now to generate high throughput sequence. Um, we have the Illumina Genome Analyzer 2, and now the Illumina HiSeq 1000 and HiSeq 2000. These are going to generate um, short reads. You have um, Roche 454 that's going to give you long, longer reads. Um, Pacific Biosystems is sequencing single molecules. And then the Ion Torrent is, um, again, sequencing. Uh, but as opposed to the rest of these that use fluorescence, Ion torrent is actually going to measure um, based on the chemistry, which is measuring the pH after the hydrogen atoms are released. So today's webinar, we're going to just talk about um, sequence that comes out of Illumina machines. So the Genome Analyzer 2 or the HiSeq machines. Um, well, all three of these machines allow for highly parallel sequencing by synthesis. You can do single or um, paired N reads that are between 50 base pairs and 100 base pairs. Um, from one lane of the high seq 2000, you get between 187 million and 374 million reads, depending on if you're using single or paired N. Um, and one, an important thing to note however, is that there's a high error rate towards the 3' prime end of these reads. Okay, so before we can align the reads that we're going to get from our Illumina machine, 
we need to understand the sequence file that we're getting. So this is going to be a different format than the FASTA format that we talked about earlier in the webinar. Um, and this is actually called FASTQ. So FASTQ files start with a read name. So it has at and then the read name. You then have the read itself. You have the, the name of the read or um, a different header depending on how it outputs from the machine. And then you have this line of quality scores that each one of these quality scores correlates to the base above it in the read score. So these quality scores are actually ASCII characters and they can convert to a number and that number is um, a relative FRED score. Now what is a FRED score? This is the, um, it provides a probability that the base was called incorrectly. So if this converts to a 10 in the FRED score, that is telling you that one in, that there's a 1 in chan 10 chance that that base is called incorrectly. If it's a 20, there's a 1 in 100, 30 is 1 in 1,000, and so on. Uh, so before we do any aligning, I suggest um, everybody to check the quality of their next generation sequence data that they get to see if it's of good enough quality to trust your alignments. So how can we do that? Uh, we can use a program called the FASTX Toolkit. This program has um, scripts within it to check the quality, to do um, subsequent trimming if it's necessary based on um, what the quality plots look like. And um, it advanced. And it's available um, at this website for download. So you can um, download it and install it. So we're not going to go through all the programs that are available within the FastX Toolkit because there's a lot, but um, what we'll talk about today is using them to look at the quality of our reads within um, a library. So the first thing we want to use is the FASTX statistics program. So we will use this FASTX quality stats. Um, we can use this dash H option to print out all of this information. But basically what we need to give it is an input file that's a FASTQ file and an output file where we want the statistics to be printed. So I put here an example of how you would type this on the command line. And then we're going to take these stats and we're going to use the FASTX quality box plot graph to give us a graphical representation of those statistics. And um, we can do that with the FASTX quality box plot graph.sh, the shell script. And so as an input, we want to give it the statistics file that we generated um, up here. Um, this dash T can give a title to the graph that we're creating. And then this dash O is the name of the image that we're going to create. All right, so let's see what it will look like if we run these. So these two commands will give us these, a box plot that represents all of the reads within that library. And what you have along the axis here is each position of the read so these were 75 base pair reads. And then on this axis, you have the FRED scores, the FRED-like scores. And this is a distribution across, you know, if we had 30 million reads, it's the distribution of the quality score at base one across all of those reads. So ideally, we would like to have everything above a FRED score of 20. Um, you can see this is a not very good um, lane of sequence here. The, the quality deteriorates very quickly. But if we have something more like this bottom scenario, we'll feel very good about it. These are um, good reads. Okay, so now that we have checked the quality of our reads, we can move on to aligning them. The traditional sequence alignment algorithms, particularly the, the ones that we discussed in the first part of this webinar, um, cannot be scaled to align millions of reads. They just weren't designed for that. Um, newer programs have been created for short reads and 
um, in a lot of reads that first index the genome um, using indexes such as the burroughs wheeler to uh, allow for ultra-fast, memory-efficient alignment of the reads to our reference. And here's a, this is a public service announcement that I want to make. Next generation sequencing alignment algorithms are changing very quickly and they're evolving to keep up with the rate at which um, sequence throughput is increasing. And so we'll go through some programs today, but I would highly suggest that if you are going to do this um, in the future, that you look into the literature and see which algorithms people are um, using at the time, because these ones may not be the most ideal at that time. Okay, so the set of sequence alignment programs that we're going to talk about today are called the Tuxedo Suite. Uh, these include bow tie, top hat, and couplings and for tuxedo. So bow tie is a very nice program for doing fast and quality aware alignments of short reads. Um, and this quality aware portion is taking into account the quality scores that we saw in the fast Q format. So this is for aligning um, mostly DNA to DNA, but it's also the backbone for aligning RNA to DNA in the program Top Hat which is splice junction aware, or um, identify splice sites. Um, and this is, this is used for RNA-seq reads. It's built on top of bow tie. And then um, another program within this suite is couplings. Now, this is not for sequence alignment. It's actually for um, prediction of transcript abundance. Um, but it is uh, built on top of the top hat, bow tie and top hat. And so I wanted to mention it here. Okay, so Bowtie is available for Windows, Mac, Linux, and Solaris operating systems. Um, this is not something you want to use just for any sequence alignment like BLAST. It's um, designed specifically for aligning um, short reads to large genomes. Um, and Bowtie forms the basis for Top Hat, Cufflinks, Crossbow, and Myrna. These are both uh, cloud computing programs that we're not going to talk about today. Um, and the online manual and information about how to download Bowtie is available here. Um, and it is very helpful for understanding all the options that are available as it gives a description on the website. All right. So, as I mentioned before, these newer programs for aligning next generation sequences index the genome first. And so we need to create this index before we can do our alignment. To do that, we'll use um, this Bowtie Build program within Bowtie. Um, this is, we would want to type in the command line, so you type in Bowtie Build, any options you want to give it, and then um, the reference sequence, and the base of the index name. And below this, I have um, an example with these options filled in. So uh, we didn't use any, um, any options outside of the default, but we have uh, each of the chromosomes listed here. And then test index is going to be the, the base name of the files that are going to be generated by Bowtie Build. You can use additional options that you can uh, see with this dash H option or on the website to improve performance. So this is our, our index. And then we actually need to align our reads using this index. And to do that, we'll use um, the program Bowtie within Bowtie. Um, this is the command line that you want to use. So you'll give it all of your options. And then um, you need to give it the sequence, and so you, you can align single-in or paired-end uh, reads, and that this is basically telling you that you can use any of those options. And then you want to give it your output directory. And so here's an example of how we can use that. We'd say bow tie. Our, um, we want to give it our index, so it's test index that we created up here. We need to tell it uh, we want it to run as a quality-aware aligner, so we need to tell it the scale that the quality is in. 
Um, so the Selexa 1.3 falls is going to be appropriate for um, newer Illumina data. Um, and then we want to give it the sequence name here and the output. Okay, so this, there's additional options that we can use to uh, modify how our alignment is going to operate. So in the default mode, Bowtie runs in a Mac-like model where it's quality aware, but we can also run Bowtie in a soap-like mode by giving this dash V option, which is specifying how many mismatches will allow in an alignment, and it disregards the quality of those reads. Um, other options that we can use are the dash A, which tells Bowtie to report all of the valid alignments. This can be hundreds for some reason. We might not want to do that. We might want to say no, only report up to two valid alignments, which we can do with the dash K option. Using this dash dash best, we say don't just give me any two, give me the best. Dash M, um, We'll say if there's more than two possible alignments, don't print anything. Um, and we could do this if we want to have only unique reads. And then finally, uh, uniquely mapped reads that is. And then finally we can specify, I'll put it in SAM format, which is then compatible with SAM tools. We can use for SNP variant calling and manipulation of the alignments. And there's many other options. This is just a few of the ones you may want to use. Um, so the next program that you could use for gen, um, alignment of next generation sequencing is Top Hat. This is available only for Linux and OS X operating systems. It's built on Bowtie and it uses the same genome index that Bowtie used. Um, and this is used for aligning RNA-seq reads to the genome. And, um, in Top Hat, this has been optimized for paired end reads um, that are greater than 70 base pairs. Um, and here is a link to the manual that, again, um, has examples as well as all of the options. So how does Top Hat work? Like I said, it's built on Bowtie. So what's happening here is it's going to align all of the reads using Bowtie. There's going to be a subset of those reads that can't align because they're spanning an intron exon boundary. So it's then going to take everything that couldn't map, split them up, and try and find where they can map on both sides of a splice junction. And then it's, it's going to use that to help um, determine where splice junctions are and where these unmapped reads um, actually align. So we are starting to run out of time, so I don't want to talk about this uh, in too much detail, but um, there's the command line options for running Top Hat, and this is very similar to um, what we saw for Bowtie, but here we're going to um, also give um, options about the intron size. So I have here the default sizes, and if your um, organism does not fall within these values, you're going to want to specify what it should use. Um, if you're using paired ends, you need to specify what the uh, predicted distance is between those mate pairs. And then um, this option allows you to run on multiple threads, um, basically using multiple CPUs so that it can run faster. So a nice thing that you can do with the output from Top Hat is generate what we call these wiggle tracks. Um, and this allows you to view the coverage of reads that you have in a genome browser. So we will take the output from Top Hat, which is a BAM file, and this is the um, binary of the SAM file. We'll convert it to a SAM file and use this Wiggles program that's within Top Hat to create a Wiggle track that then can be viewed in programs such as um, the Integrated Genome Browser or um, Integrated Genome Viewer. And um, this purple here is an example of a wiggle track where we can see um, all of the reads that the coverage we have across this gene. So this is a nice way to view your alignments that you've done of your next generation sequence. 
So there are additional alignment programs. I just talked about the, uh, the tuxedo suite of programs. Um, I have here a list of other programs and a really nice review if you are interested in um, learning about other programs. Like I said, these are very fast evolving and you should really look into the most current literature to, to determine which program you should use when you're doing your alignment. Finally, I have here a few valuable resources that I would suggest anybody who would like to learn more about sequence alignment invest in. So this is a book that describes more on the theory and also practices for BLAST. It will give you uh, more of a basis for how to do command line blasting if that's um, something you're interested in. And then these next three books uh, are very helpful. The Bash shell is is what you're going to want to use to do your command line um, alignments and then um, subsequently you're going to need to interpret those outputs and parse them into a usable format and Perl is a very nice program um, programming language to do that in and I have here two books that um, are very helpful for learning how to use Perl. So with that I will take any questions. So there is a one question here. Uh, it is, is Mummer free? Yes, it is. And Candy, I believe all of the, the software you discussed today, except for VMatch, was um, freely available. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. And I provided the URLs where you would want to go to download each of the programs, um, which will be on the slides that, Heather, you're going to put up on the left, right? That's correct. And what I'll also do is um, make a list of external links at the bottom of the page um, so that if you don't have the presentation handy in front of you, you can also look at that page of links. Um, and I will do the same thing for the um, four texts that Candy uh, showed to us at the end of the presentation as well. Okay, so the next question is, do you have comments on the speed or computation time needed for the def different next generation sequence alignment tools? Um, so that's going to depend partly on how you build your index and um, the number of reads you have and the size of your genome. So each of the programs that I talked about today has a manuscript that was published with the program and they have estimates in there for alignment to the human genome, but um, for plant people, this is, those estimates aren't going to be the same. So it's going to depend on your computer and um, how many reads you have, et cetera. So I, I don't think I can give an estimate for the general case. Okay. Um, and it's, I've got another, oops, another question. Uh, is there any size limitation to align two genomes using Mummer? Um, I don't think so. Although, and then I've always done it on a chromosome by chromosome, and so maybe if you put a whole genome in, I'm sure there is a maximum limitation, but I've not reached it. Okay. And so would you generally recommend, if possible, for people to try to look on more of a uh, chromosome, chromosome basis um, to try to, to perhaps decrease uh, computation time a little bit? Yeah, definitely the um, smaller the thing you're aligning, the faster it's going to be in Mummer. Um, also, just for visually looking at it on the um, graphical display that I showed you all, if you have 10 chromosomes by 10 chromosomes, it's going to be very difficult to see uh, where individual um, inversions, et cetera, are. And so you, if you have no idea which chromosomes are, should be aligned, you may want to do a pairwise of all possible chromosomes. Uh, but Mummer is actually a very fast program computationally. It's, it's okay. quite fast. And the next question is, 
Um, are the next generation sequence alignment software, are they appropriate or are they capable of uh, performing, or are they suitable, sorry, for, for genotyping by sequencing? Yeah, so um, within Bowtie and Tappet, you can output in SAM format. This is then compatible with SAM tools, uh, which is a program for calling um, SNP and Indel variants. Um, SOAP is another program that I didn't talk about, but it um, it's also used for aligning next generation sequence, sequences, and it has a variant color within the program. And um, that was so uh, was on that last slide as another one of the programs. So definitely, the, um, both of those programs are are highly suited for calling variants. Okay, and now we have um, a little bit of a related question on looking at variants, which is how do, how do you choose the gap opening penalty and the gap extension penalty in BLAST in order to find SNPs? As an example. Um, so there's a standard scoring matrix, Blossom, that um, is typically used. I have not called SNPs um, from BLAST results, so I don't know exactly what parameter you would want to use, but um, you may want to try multiple parameters and, and estimate from there. the best I could give on that, sorry. Okay, not a problem. Okay, we have a little bit more time for questions, um, if there are some looming thoughts out there. And I'd also like to encourage you, John has put up this title slide again, um, I'd encourage you to uh, check out our the e-extension content that the plant breeding and genomics community has put out, and you can find that at uh, eextension.org slash plant underscore breeding underscore genomics, and we will be uh, posting the recording to this site uh, within about the next week. And I would also encourage you to sign up for uh, PBG News, and we use this to announce um, all of our webinars, provide some reminders for webinars, and also announce other events that um, and exciting news from the plant breeding and genomics community of practice. And with that, uh, I'd like to thank all of you for attending today and for all of your questions. If you have uh, lingering questions or questions that um, come to your mind later on, please direct them to me at merk, M-E-R-K, dot nine at osu dot edu. And thank you very much for joining us.